Two, the first take didn't work out so hot. For some reason, we had a technical glitch, and it was repeating me over and over and over and over again. It was so annoying. There's no way I could have presented my content with that going. So right now, I'm just waiting for Deirdre, my co-host, to get on the um, on the presentation real quick here. And I want to make sure that everyone was able to, to grab that new link. I just put in the Coach Success group, and I know that means that not everyone's going to have the right link. People that are only checking their email, they're going to get the old link, and they're not going to see this. So I apologize, but these things happen. At least we're going to be recording. It is recording. It should be recording. And hopefully this time there will be no technical glitch. If there is, then um, Deirdre and I will just have to probably record it on Zoom and then send it out to everyone because I do want you to get this content. This is super important. This is going to be about creating an opt-in. So I'm just going to give it another minute. If you're watching the, the recording, scroll through fast forward for like two or three minutes until we get to the actual beginning of this presentation. I'm going to check Facebook real quick just to make sure it says that everyone's able to get on. And let's see. All right, so got a little, okay, I've got three viewers. That's awesome. I'm celebrating the three. Okay, and Deirdre's on. That's awesome. Yes, okay, and I'm not echoing yet anyway. Okay, so Deirdre. Yes. You're good? I'm good. I'm good. There's no <laughs> echo. I'm, I'm scared because it started like 30 seconds in after once you got on. Or, or No, you were on before. I don't know when it started, but it was weird. Okay, so take two. My name is Janelle, and it is September 16th. It's my mom's birthday, so be sure if you know my mom or friends with her on Facebook that you wish her a very happy birthday. Um, today, I'm going to be talking about creating an opt-in, and I've invited a very special guest, Deirdre Shockley. She is my web designer, web builder, and she does so much for me, and I just think she's amazing. And I am not an expert on creating opt-ins. And so when I decided to do this training, I did it because... I thought this is something my team really, really needs. This is a really important topic. And some of you that have coaches of your own, you're thinking, well, I'm not going to do a training on this because I don't know enough about it or I don't really know what I'm doing. Well, here's the deal. When you're leading a team, you have to just schedule that training and then learn as much as you can and then present everything that you know, right? When I became a coach and I started building a team, I figured I just need to be a sponge and learn everything I can for my team. Same thing with this. I'm not an expert on opt-ins, but over the last um, week, I've been looking at different things and just, you know, thinking about it and, and in preparation for this training. Last night, I was up late just looking through JotForm and how I could create one just to show you guys because I actually don't create my opt-ins. Deirdre does it for me, but I just wanted to show you how simple it is to do yourself. But if you're someone that's really not tech savvy and it's going to take you 10 times longer than it would the average person, then it might might be worth your time and money to just hire that out okay um, I can do it but I also know that Deirdre can do it a lot faster and my time is spent better elsewhere right um, and I know that a lot of you if you follow my sister you know that she's really big on creating opt-ins and really big on you delegating your work and hiring it out because even when you can't afford to sometimes you can't afford not to Right, because you are too busy in your life and in your full time job and taking care of the kids and everything to be fully taking advantage of what this business has to offer you. And so, since you don't have enough time, you, you can't fully take advantage of what this business has to offer. And so, you can't afford not to hire someone to do some of this work for you, right? You are the one that can be composing your. Um, your thank you letter, your emails, your posts, and all that stuff, and you can do it on the weekends, and then schedule this stuff out, and make these opt-ins and things be working for you while you're at work, while you're sleeping. In fact, last night while I was sleeping, my opt-in, I woke up this morning to, oh my gosh, so many <laughs> submissions on, on my opt-in. While I was sleeping, I built my network by like, I don't know, 50 people or something. It was insane. So that's why this is important, right? Okay, so I want to start by saying, let's see, I've got my notes over here. Um, 
Okay, so when it comes to an opt-in, let's first talk about what is an opt-in. An opt-in, and you've all, I'm sure, if you do anything online or have ever done any shopping or anything, uh, you've seen an opt-in. It's where you enter your email address or some type of information, usually it's your email address, in exchange for something else. You're opting in for something, right? And so we are usually, as coaches, we're creating an opt-in where we're asking for their email address. Because as coaches, one of the most important important things that we have to be doing is building our network full of like-minded people. That's what builds your business, building a network full of like-minded people. And so as we're building an opt-in, you are building a list and you're getting their email addresses. Why is that so important above and beyond just what you're doing on social media? Because you don't own, own your Facebook page. And although you may have a hundred like, likers on your like page or a thousand likers or 100,000 likers on your like page. You don't own your Facebook account, right? They can shut it down. Now, I've never had that happen, of course, and I'm not worried about it, but you don't have direct communication with them, whereas if you have their email address, you do. So I highly recommend that as you're building your network, you're building your email list simultaneously, okay? Very, very key. And like I said, you can be building it while you sleep and while you're at work and while you're with the kids and while you're on date night with your husband. It can be building all that time, right? So it really is a huge time saver. And yes, it's gonna be a little bit of investment on your part, financially and time-wise just up front, okay? But it's gonna pay for itself if you do it right, and it's so simple. So I wanna also say that when it comes to an opt-in, it's really important that you have either a like page to be able to really fully leverage your opt-in that you create, um, or an Instagram account, or a blog, or you can also use an opt-in on Pinterest. Because you can have a, a picture and it says something like my my 30 day shred or something and they click on it and it takes them to a link that is like a um, you know an opt in page where they put in their email address and apply for your 30 day challenge or your 21 day challenge or whatever. So that's something that we're on Pinterest that can live forever and is working for you all week long and all weekend long as people are clicking on that, right? Um, unlike Facebook on Pinterest things live there, right? With Facebook, it's it's on the newsfeed and then it's gone, pretty much. Okay, so definitely, if you haven't created a like page yet, I always say for my new coaches, brand new coaches, um, start with you know just your personal page, getting in your groove, figuring out what to post about, how to post, kind of getting in the habit of posting, because most people coming in aren't in the habit of posting, they just maybe post it once in a while with their kids or the dog or whatever. And now with coaching, you gotta kinda get in that habit of posting daily and twice a day, and then maybe by a week from now, it's three times a day. Getting in that groove, and once you've got that groove, time to open up a like page, because there are other things that you can do with your like page that you cannot do with your personal page. Um, so definitely start thinking about opening up your like page if you haven't yet. Now, if you've been a coach and you're not, you're not considered a new coach, it is time. It is time to open up a like page and get that going. And yes, you can post the same content on your personal page as you do on your Instagram as you do on your um, like page. All three can match a little bit. I just mix it up just a little bit. But yeah, I do definitely have some overlap to save me some time. Um, so why do we need an opt-in? Well, first of all, like I said, you, you don't own your social media platforms. Um, and so the followers you have on those platforms aren't as valuable to you if you can't connect with them directly, right? So having an opt-in allows you the ability to collect their email addresses and or their phone numbers to be able to text them and have that direct line of communication. Without that direct line of communication, you can't build a relationship, right? It's, very, it's much more difficult if you can't directly um, be communicating with people. Of course, we have Facebook messaging, and that is awesome. Definitely be doing that. But you want to have that, um, that email address as well because um, there are going to be some people that don't see your Facebook posts. And so by emailing them, like you know, if you're on my email list, I email my um, – my list like once or twice a week with um, recipes and um, you know food inspiration and that kind of stuff and um, fitness tips that kind of stuff so I'm constantly 
providing value to them because I know all of my people on my list are not necessarily seeing my Facebook posts. So creating, bringing that value um, to them and creating that trust and building that relationship and giving them the opportunity to click reply, reply back to my emails and connect with me. Um, so what can you use your opt-in for? Now, you could create a freemium, okay? So just to give you an example, um, if you follow me, you may know that I've created a food inspiration ebook. And all I did, you guys, so simple, is I went and hired someone at, on elance.com. I just said, you know, and anyone can do this. I'm, I'm not, you know, tech savvy or anything special. Doesn't take a lot of money. And Elance is, is very inexpensive. And I just went to elance.com and I posted the job and I said, the job is um, for someone to take the uh, last 50 posts that contain food from my Instagram account and create an ebook with it. That's all I said. And so I got a whole bunch of bids on that. I had bids, people saying I'll do it for 50 bucks. I had people saying I'll do it for 200 bucks. I had, you know, a whole range of bids and you get to look and see what kind of work they do and how many, um, what their ratings are and what their, um, what their work actually looks like. And so you get to, you know, choose. And once you hire someone, that money goes into escrow and you don't pay until you're satisfied with the completion of the, the project. And so I hired someone to do that. And so she put together this ebook looks great in my opinion. She just took, she logged into my Instagram. She took my last 50 photos. She took my posts that were already with the photo. So I like didn't have to do anything. I just said, go there, take that, put it together, make it look pretty. Right. And so she put it together. It looks amazing and did it fairly quickly. And so now I've got myself a freemium. Did it take me a little bit of time to coordinate with her? And did it, did I have to pay for that? Of course, but is it worth it? Oh my gosh, I cannot even tell you how worth it that was because that has helped me build my network and my list like crazy. Um, so that's been awesome. And I didn't do any selling in my ebook. I wasn't trying to sell Shakeology. I just was trying to create value. I was just trying to give people something that I thought might help them, some food ideas. So um, you can use your opt-in for a freemium like that. So on my um, uh, opt-in, it just says, you know, enter your email here to receive a download of that ebook, right? Okay, so now I have, I just created it. Um, Deirdre helped with this and my assistant Hannah helped with this. Actually, she's not an assistant. I, I call her more like my senior executive uh, VP of business. I mean, she's amazing. Um, so it's just a freemium of what I typically eat in a day because some people that got the food inspiration ebook said they'd like to see, even though they know all the different things I eat, they were like, I want to see what you typically eat in a day. Just realistically, what do you normally eat? I was like, I don't know why anyone wants to know that, but okay, here it is. So I created a freemium with that. And, um, you know, I promoted it, talked about the fact that I was going to be putting it out there. And so I put it out there last night for the first time, got a whole bunch of new people um, opting into my list. And um, so I, again, built my network overnight while I was sleeping. So you can do it for a freemium. That's number one. You can also create an opt-in just as like an application, like enter your email address and your information and we'll see if this challenge group is right for you or we'll see if becoming a coach is right for you. So it's a way for you to learn about someone and get like an application, but at the same time, you're collecting their email address as someone who's possibly interested in your challenge group or possibly interested in your coach sneak peek or possibly just interested in joining your team. Okay. So it could be used for an application. It could be used for a freemium. You could also do other things like you could um, use it for a survey where you're just saying, you know, creating this form and it's just asking them, you know, different questions. But I think for us as coaches, the best two uses are probably, and the most common uses are for a freemium, um, you know, something to download, some, something to sign up for, and or an application. Those are the most common uses. Um, and Deirdre, if I say anything where you're like, I need to add to that, please go ahead and interrupt me. Are we good so far? You're absolutely fantastic. Okay, awesome. Okay, and so guys, hang on because I am going to go through how to actually I'm going to do a screen share of how to actually create this opt-in form. So first of all, I do want to say that there are different um, programs, websites you can use for creating an opt-in. Uh, there's leadpages.net, 
there's a megaphone. I think megaphone is who my sister's been using, or maybe it's leadpages.net. Um, and actually the one that I'm going to go through today is JotForm. I feel like JotForm is so, so simple. And I'm not saying the others aren't, but this is just the one that that I'm familiar with and that um, Deirdre has set up for me. And so it just seems so simple and so versatile. So I'm gonna go through how to create a job form opt-in so you can see how simple this is. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and um, do a screen share. Hold on, let me just check here and make sure I've got my job form up on the screen. Give me one second here. Okay. So, Deirdre, can you see, is it nice and clear, my jot form? Yes, it's very clear, very good. Okay, and do you still see me or no, just the jot form? Just you, I mean, just the jot form. Just the jot form, okay, good, because I might be like squinting and making faces as I try and figure this out. Okay, so you guys, look up here in the URL, hopefully you can see my cursor over the uh, URL bar up here where I just typed in www.jotform.com, jotform.com. Okay, so that's all you'd have to do, type that in, and it brings you to this screen here, okay? Just take a note of all the different um, tabs up at the top. This is where you would click to see all your different jot forms that you've created, the different templates, the different themes, plugins, support. Here's where you would go if you want to see the pricing. Now, I think for most of you, you can get away with just a free account at first. Yes. Um, don't you think, Deirdre? Yes, I have a free account and I use it all the time. Yeah, because I think it allows you to make like, um, it allows up to like 100 submissions or something? Yes, 100. 100 submissions. In other, words, in other words, 100 people have opt in, opted in or 100 different um, opt-in forms. 100 different submissions. Okay, so many, that many forms as you want, and um, and that's per month. So once one month is over, the next month begins. Okay, so in other words, a submission is someone opting in to that application or that freemium, and so and that's per month. So even if you for free were able to build your list by a hundred people per month, that's pretty awesome. And then you've got, of course, where you can log in and sign up. Okay, so I'm not even going to log into my own account. I'm just going to show you what you would see when you go into JotForm, okay? And so, of course, the very first tab here is Form Tools, right? So hopefully you can see. Now, if I go through any of this too fast, of course, this is all being recorded. You can pause and play it back again. Now, with JotForm, what I like, one thing I like about it is it's drag and drop. So you click on it here, and you just drag it over and let go. Okay, so this is my heading, right? Because I clicked on heading, so this would be my heading. So maybe my heading would be um, download to sample uh, meal plans. Okay, so maybe you research your favorite meal plans. Maybe you went to Google, maybe you went to Oxygen Magazine or whatever, and you found your two favorite meal plans and you're putting them in a document for your, your followers. So you say, download these two sample meal plans. And so let's say you then wanted to um, put a little uh, picture underneath it, okay? So as you can see, I've got all these different options of things I could put underneath it. So let's say I want to put a picture of what those are going to look like. It says, upload, enter your URL, upload an image. I'm going to upload an image, click Next, and I'm going to choose a file. And I'm just going to go to my desktop and choose this. It should be interesting because I couldn't really see what that is, but I think I know what it is. Yes. Okay. So it made that really big, but I'm pretty sure I can shrink that by clicking on this little icon right here. See, I can exit out if I'm like, nope, never mind. I didn't mean to do that. I could delete that picture. Um, here is where I can shrink it. Okay, so let's say that was a picture of um, one of the meal plans, okay? And so then I can either upload another file or duplicate that one. Let's say it was a different picture. So I could have two pictures, two sample meal plans, okay? People like visuals. And then let's say I wanted to add a um, text area underneath it. I would just drag that down underneath these pictures. This is so cool, right? 
and I can say something like choose the one that suits you and I can elaborate in this box here okay again if I don't want that I can X that out I can move these things around so let's say I want a um, a radio button bring that down and in order to change these options I go to um, I believe I can highlight these forget how to do it yep okay yes. so let's say I wanted to say one is vegan and another one is non-vegan So I could do something like that. It's not letting me click off it. And let's say I don't want that one. Okay. So you can see all these different things you can do to create your form. And obviously I'm just making this up as I go. Um, and then you've got your submit button down here. And I'm pretty sure that you can, um, you've got different options when it comes to your submit button. Now I'm not seeing that. Don't you have different options when it comes to your submit button and how that looks, Deirdre? Yes, if you will uh, rest your mouse over to the right, there's a little. Oh, I, um, I just got it. So when you click on that box, that's when you get to edit that box. So I was clicked on that box. So if I click on my submit box, that's where it says submit text. And I could actually change it to say finish or um, download. You know, because maybe once they hit this, it's going to take them right to the page of the two different um, meal plans, okay? So as you can see, you've got all these different options. Like you can, you can have a, a checkbox, and again, you can change these to say whatever you want them to say. Like maybe um, they want, um, I don't know, obviously this doesn't even make sense for this one, but you can... <laughs> Say whatever you wanted to say that's my point um, so these are completely customizable and you can move you can move your things around you know maybe you want the picture to show up first maybe you want the heading to be up here everything is customizable now the really important thing that you want you wonder quick tools you need to have their name right so bring that in drop that in and of course right away it gives you a field now I could put it down here if I wanted and then you need their email. This is so important. You have to have their email, right? So here it's going to tell them to put in their email. Okay. So, of course, you've got other options. Like they could put in their phone number. You could ask for their address. But I think for us, most of the time, all you're going to need is a heading, their email, their full name, maybe a picture, um, and then some type of submit or finish button down here. Usually you're not going to need this box right here. But again, maybe you have other words that you want to put in there. So that's that's basically as quick as, I mean, you can literally create a job form in five minutes. Five minutes. So there's absolutely no excuse. Now, there's other things that you can do um, with your job form. And I want to go into that. But I want to ask you first, Deirdre, did you have any other um, additions to that? Or did you want to show them how to create a landing page? I can have you be presenting to the, um, the group? I'd be happy to uh, show them how to make a landing page. Okay. So do you want to? I, I just need to show you to them. So I'm gonna have you present to everyone and then when you hover over to your left, the green arrow is where you uh, do your screen share. And my screen is ready to share. All right, I think we yes. see yours now. Yes. Okay. So the exact same thing that you did before, um, I'm actually just going to throw some things over here so that we have something. Sure. And now, um, when you click, there's two more buttons up here. There's designer and themes. And if you click themes, you get this beautiful screen here. And then if you click um, well, theme store, the featured themes, they have free themes and they have paid themes. And so I like free. <laughs> so here are all of the free themes that they have. 
And so whatever you like, let's see. Let's just do this one. All you do is you click it. And it puts the form behind, it puts that picture behind your form. That's so cool. And so now you have a beautiful form, a beautiful landing page. You can save changes and then go back to Builder. And wait a second here. And then you get this link. So what, what did you click on? You clicked embed form. What did you just click on to get that link? Um, embed form. I'll go back and do it, but I want to show you the, there's your form. That is so cool. Isn't that beautiful? It's beautiful. So yes, um, you click embed form. Okay. And then it gives you the direct link right here. So they just highlight that. And um, copy. Okay. And then that is the link that they'll paste in another window. Right, so that would be the link that they could paste into their Facebook post mm -hmm. or into, um, you know, when you're on Pinterest and you upload a picture on Pinterest, if you click edit picture, it says what website do you want this to go to when they click on that picture and you could copy, you could paste in there your job form so that it signs them up for your 21 day challenge because of course it, it should be related to whatever the picture was. But you could paste that link right in there or um, if you're on Instagram, let's say you really hate Facebook and you're on Instagram and that's your following. And so you could say, hey guys, go to the link in my bio and you can make the link in your bio that sign up for your free accountability group or your 21 day accountability group or your sneak peek or whatever. Um, but it can link right to that jot form that you just created. Yes. Okay, and another one, uh, one other thing that you want to do is after they sign up, you want to have a nice page for them to go to. So you just click this thank you, little smiley face here. Okay. And so as soon as they click that, you can, this is what they'll see. You get a little picture of what they'll see. You can edit this page, and now you can put in, um, you can change some text. Come on, let me add text. Well, I did it yesterday. <laughs> well, trust me, you can. I believe you. <laughs> oh, it's white. That's what's wrong. Oh. The font color is white. Yeah. So here. There. Yeah. Hello. Awesome. So now when someone when someone uh, fills out their form, you can have a and you can add pictures too. So there's that also. Um, one more is that you want to send them, um, you want to be notified and you also want your people to be notified. So right here is where you can click autoresponder and you can put your name and your email address and just, just click the jot form and then click next and right here you will have the ability to just send them a nice email yeah thank you for signing up and you will save it and then they'll get a nice email when you uh, when they submit awesome that's awesome and so what I what I was doing for a while there is um, I would I had a job form that said um, you know fill out this form if you're interested in more information regarding the coaching business and so I think in the thank you email isn't that where I was sending them more information about the coaching business yes yes so I mean 
be creative about this, you guys. I mean, it's not like, like for, for that example, there was no freemium. I just said, fill out this form if you'd like to receive more information about coaching. And so then I think it, isn't it Deirdre, Deirdre within 24 hours that thank you comes to them? Yes. Yep. So, uh, so in that I would say, fill this out and in 24 hours you'll hear back, back from me regarding the coaching business opportunity and what it entails. And so then the thank you that came back to them was, you know, thank you for your interest. Here's some more information. It was just some bullet points about the coaching opportunity. The fact that they get a 25% discount on all products and programs. The fact that they make a 25% commission on any sales. The fact that they make a team bonus. The fact that I would be their mentor if they were joining me and I would be training them and getting started. The fact that it costs $39.95 to join. The fact that it costs $15.95 per month for their website fee. Um, and then I just said, please, you know, reply back, you know, email me, let me know what your questions are at this point. Let's talk further. So again, it's not like you have to have something that they're actually um, getting like a, a PDF or an ebook or a webinar or whatever. It, it could just be additional information. Um, so really use your creativity with that. Did you have anything else, Deirdre? I was going to go into how to... Or maybe, I mean, it's up to you. I can go into how to, you know, connect that. It's super simple, connecting it to their email provider. Oh, it, if you want to do that, that's fine or whatever you want. So you can sure. take it away. All right. Let me get back into it. Let me make sure that I'm on now. Thanks for your patience, you guys, as we flip back and forth. I'm going to go ahead and do my screen share now. And I'm going to show you how to make this work with your... Um, your email provider. Okay, Deirdre, can you see my job form again? Yes, I do. Okay, so let's say you have created this job form, and um, I, wanna, I wanna point out to you, just in case I forget, that there's two, heading, there's two tabs here. See how I'm clicking back and forth between these two tabs? And depending on which tab I've clicked on, I've got different things at the top. Because I remember at one point I was in this tab, and I was, so frustrated that I couldn't see at the top that thank you email piece that I wanted to work on. And I realized it's because I was in the wrong tab, that that emails piece and that thank you piece was in this tab. So I just want to save you um, those little uh, things that frustrated me when I was looking at it. Um, the other thing is, I wanted to ask you, Deirdre, you've got embed form and you've got source code. What's the difference? When do you use the source code versus embed form? When you use the, um, the source code is when you want to actually, if you'll click that source code right now, I'll show you. Uh -huh. That is actually a script that will go onto your website. Okay. And, and that will be embedded on your website. Okay. That is not a self-hosted. Okay, because I think I at one point used that code and tried to put it in a, um, a Facebook post when it's really this embed form code. That's the one that you guys want to use when you're you know, putting it in your Pinterest picture or your Facebook post. Now, let me just mention again, I, I kind of said this at the beginning, but I want to say it again. When, when you're posting a link in a Facebook post, typically, from my experience, the post does not do well. So when I'm doing a job form link in a Facebook post, I'm doing that post as a boosted post. In other words, I'm paying for a ticket to the newsfeed um, because I know there's a link in my post and I know it might not get as good of traction because of that. Um, and so I'm actually, I actually do a boosted post or a Facebook ad for that. Um, and that way it's not such a big deal. If you look at my like page, last night I posted about my um, typical day of eating uh, freemium and I didn't word it, I didn't word that post the way I normally would when I'm doing a Facebook post. Normally I start my Facebook post with a question, I make it really engaging and then I talk about what I'm offering them or what, you know, whatever it is. But with that one, I didn't do that. I didn't worry that much about my wording because I knew I was gonna boost that post, and I did. I boosted that post last night, and it did really well up until it got disapproved by Facebook because it had too much text on my photo. You can't have more than 20% 
text on your photo. So it got disapproved. But the cool thing is, is that it went really far, really fast before it got disapproved. And um, my point is that, you know, when you're doing a Facebook post that you know you're going to boost it or you're going to do it as an ad, you don't have to be as creative about your wording trying to get it to more news feeds because you're paying for it to get to news feeds. Um, okay, so enough about that. And again, if you're doing a jot form and you're putting it in a post on a personal page, I can't imagine it would get any traction because I've tried a link on a post in a personal page and it just goes nowhere. It's crickets. Facebook just is like, no, 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 no. We're not, we're not bringing that to the newsfeed. There's a link there. There's a link in there. So if any of you, if this is news to you, when you have a link in your post on your personal page, it just doesn't do well. So if you were to do this, just let's say today, just to test it out, I mean, I guess you could say check for the link in the comments section. Um, and then you could post your jot form link in the comments. So that would be one way around it. But I really do recommend that um, you start get your, your like page up and running. And it's not any big deal. You just got to do it, right? You don't even have to tell people about it until it you know, looks the way you want it to look. Back to where I was. I just wanted to also mention, and we're almost done, the integrations icon right here. Hopefully you can see my cursor over to the top right where it says integrations. Because one thing that you want to do is make sure that when you're collecting their email address that um, you are collecting it into your email provider. And of course, it's not uh, clicking right now. What's up with this, Deidre? It's just got like issues. Um, let me just click off and back on. It doesn't like me right now. Integrations. Deidre, are you still there? Try, yes. Try, um, click the undo button over there, the green button. Just click yeah. undo. Okay. I'm not sure what the problem is, but sometimes that helps. Still not doing it. Hmm. Well, bummer. Um, normally that works. Click undo again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Come on, chat form. We're trying, I'm trying to give you a good name here and you're making me look bad. Um, well, okay. I'll tell um, you, you want to try your close it and do it again. Just, you just, what? just close that job form and close that one. Do I just X out right here? Yeah, I'll just try that. No, that'll go full screen. Okay. Open job form in a new window. Okay. So Yeah. Okay. Now just click them. Click. Yeah. There. You, oh. Well. There it is. Now let's try again. What did it do this time? There it is. You guys see it? Okay. Yes. So it shows you all the different applications that you can link to your Jot form as it's collecting this information. So some of you I know use Mailchimp. I use Constant Contact. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and click in the search here. Con it com comes up right away. And so when I click on Constant Contact, I think it's going to ask me, yeah, it just asks me to log in to my Constant Contact account. And so all that'll do is it links my Constant Contact to this, and it's going to ask me, okay, when we collect email addresses, what, which email distribution list do you want it to go to? Because I have different email distribution lists within Constant Contact. I've got one that's you know, for my personally sponsored coaches, just that list of emails. I have another one that is just my customers. I have another one that's just people who are interested in Shanti type programs. Another one that's people who are interested in Shaleen programs. Another one that's you know, my food inspiration people. So I have different email lists and um, that helps me to know what kind of content to be sending them that would be valuable to them. Okay, so it's really important that you know what list and you're not just dropping them into one big mass email list. Now, if you didn't have an email provider, um, first of all, MailChimp is, is a really good one. I don't use it, but a lot of my leading coaches do and they really like it and I think it's really inexpensive. I pay a little bit more for constant contact because of the um, amount of people I have on the list but I really think that you can get a, a good a good price or maybe even free email provider. Um, but even if you're not using an email provider and you're just collecting these emails, it's going to email you every time someone opts in. So you could literally keep track of these on a notebook if you really wanted to just starting off. Okay, it's not like you have to have an email provider, but I do recommend that. Did you have any thoughts on that, Deirdre? 
Yes, uh, MailChimp is free. Okay. Uh, you can get a free email uh, list. Um, and with, um, if you'll click up there, I want to show you one more little thing. If you click up there on um, My Forms at the top, do you even see it now? Yes. If you click My Forms, mm -hmm. um, rest your mouse over or click Download My Two Sample Meal Plans. Okay. Now over there to the right, it says Inbox. Mm -hmm. Now when there's people that have signed up, if you click Inbox, go ahead and click it. And it's going to tell you there's not any submissions probably, I'm sure. Um, click inbox. It, it says it's working down at the bottom. Oh, okay. Well, it's probably because because there's nothing there. Yeah, but yeah. when you click inbox, it will give you a list of all of your people. Oh, so nice. you get to see everybody that's in um, that has that has signed up. Right, right there inside JotForm, and you can download the list also. So you you will get you get to see the people there. That's awesome. That's awesome. And you guys, I know that Beachbody gives us a um, an email collector with every new program and product that launches. Okay, and so this is another reason why I wanted to do this opt in training now. And that's great to have that email collector, and it's definitely better than nothing, and I appreciate that they give us those resources and help us with things like that. But the only problem with that email collector is that you can't see those emails that you've collected. Um, so you can't keep communicating with them. You can't keep providing value for them. Um, none of that. So with this, your own opt-in, creating your own opt-in, you can do all of that. And so, as Deirdre pointed out, pointed out, when you click on my forms, that's where it's going to list all your different opt-ins, and then you can edit your form um, over here. If you click more, you can, you know, delete it. You can rename it. You can uh, look at analytics. Lots of different things over there. Um, I think that was probably about all I have for JotForm. Did you have anything else, Deirdre, that we you think we need to review? No, I think we did a. I think we covered it. Awesome. Okay, cool. I'm going to get back on screen here. Hold on one second. Let's see if I can minimize all my million screens I've got going on. And am I on screen? Now I am, right? Now you are, yes. Okay, all right, cool. Okay, so... You guys, I really appreciate you getting on this training, and I'm sorry for the glitch that we had at the beginning. Of course, this has been recorded, so we'll be able to send that out, and you can share it with your teams. But this is a really important time to understand how opt-ins work, especially because, like I said, we've got um, you know new products and programs that are always being launched, and you've got to have a way of collecting interest. So even if you had, listen, this is a great tip. Even if you had a job form that said, um, and, and you did a Facebook ad for it or a boosted post for it, and you said, please, you know, um, if you would like to be, if you would like me to be your coach and you would like to be notified of new products and programs, please, you know, go to this form and opt in. I wouldn't say get my newsletter. I've heard a, a recent study that people do not want to sign up for any more newsletters. Um, that people are getting too many emails and when they hear newsletter, they're just like, no, 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 please, I, I won't give you my email. But if they specifically are interested in a certain product or program or they're just like, yeah, I could, I could use you, know, you as my coach, then you could create a, a form that just says, um, I'd love to be your coach. Please let me be your coach. Please give me your full name and your email address. And they can actually opt in to you being their coach versus them going on the Beachbody site and, and doing creating the account that way. Um, at least this way, you've got communication with them, um, which I think is, is really effective. So this is really important information. And I want to thank Deirdre for being on the, on the webinar today. And Deirdre, like I said, she's my web designer, my web builder. And she does an amazing job. And if you'd like to hire her for her services, I highly recommend her. She is Deirdre, D-E-I-R-D-R-E -R -R -E dot Shockley, S-H-O-C-K-L-E-Y at gmail.com. Did I say that right, Deirdre? You did. It was beautiful. Perfect. Okay. Awesome. And on um, Facebook, I think her Facebook link is um, facebook.com forward slash D Shockley. Am I right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So that's where you that's can correct. find Deirdre. 
So again, hire this out if you need help, guys. Okay, thank you so much for getting on the call, everyone. We'll see you next week. I'm very excited. We've got guest speakers lined up, and it's going to be great. Thanks so much. Have a great afternoon. Thanks, Deirdre. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.